Hi, it's Terry Dennery of the MathWorks. So in this uh, video, we're going to build on to what I introduced in the previous one, which is a DC motor driving a simple mechanical shaft um, according to a, a motion command that I, I choose. All right, and, and so in this, this video, we're going to basically model a DC motor. All right, and this is a slide that we've used at MathWorks for quite some time because DC motors are great demos for us. Uh, but the you know the the circuitry is pretty simple, and therefore the equations that govern how DC motor operates are, are not so bad also. Uh, but basically, it's an inductor in series with a resistor, and there's this magic thing where we drive current, generates a magnetic field, and ultimately we get the torque that we want, which will be proportional to current. You know, and we see that right here. T sub E is proportional to current. The other real cool thing is that, that energy is conserved and it means that a voltage is carried by this kind of magic thing of, of electromagnet, uh, electromagnets too. And so this back EMF voltage K times omega seems to be the equation that works quite so well. So anyways, so in this initial example, we'll see that we're going to solve these two equations. One's essentially Kirchhoff's law and shows, and it's constructed by the voltage balance across the circuit because there is an inductor. It is a differential equation in I, the current di dt. And then the, the second one, think of it as merely kind of a rotational expression of Newton's law, meaning that the electromagnetic torque will, will be um, subject to rotational damping B times omega, but also in the acceleration of the shaft and it will be governed by the shaft inertia. Okay, so let's kind of get at this, All right? And so here is Simulink, actually, can I show it this way? Here's MATLAB, here's, oops, let's just bring it up. Simulink runs on top of MATLAB and will open up a new model file. Just kind of move a lot of stuff over here. All right, and I'm going to begin by just bringing in a bunch of blocks. All right, so let's get a constant in there. Let's get a gain. Uh, let's get an integrator. Let's get a scope. And then under the math library, let's get the add block. All right, and basics first. Blocks connected by lines. Lines in general have arrows indicating the direction of uh, a mathematical calculation. And this is about as simple as it gets. It's so simple that Simulink is like, okay, you're sending a constant into a scope. I'm going to just calculate the first point and we don't need to do anything else. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and do something a little more challenging. And so we're going to integrate that constant signal with respect to time. And I'll hit run and we will get uh, what I do expect, which is constant integrator with regard to time, that constant will become the slope of a straight line. Okay, and let's get rid of all these little markers. Okay, all right. So next block we're gonna bring in is a gain block. Gain block takes the incoming signal, multiplies by whatever value I have here. And, you know, you might not see it. It's going to really be a rescaling the y-axis, but now it gets from zero to 20 in 10 seconds. All right. And so the slope is basically twice as steep. And then finally, uh, we'll do a second integration. So very quickly, we're integrating a second order system. All right. So it's kind of a cool Simulink demo, but it's actually quite relevant to the DC motor because we'll see that the equations we need to solve really kind of are things like this one over J, the shaft inertia. If I apply a torque here, well, one over J will be the acceleration. And I'm gonna just call it A, because I think you'll know what I mean by it. All right, and I'll call the integration of acceleration, we'll call that V for velocity, and then the velocity integrated with regard to time, that will be P, position, right? So essentially a solution to the most famous equation in math and physics, which is F is equal to MA, although again, expressed rotationally, All right? And very quickly, you know, we pretty much have solved most of our mechanics here. I'm gonna do just a slight bit more, 
All right, and so I'm going to use this add block. I'm going to make the ports plus minus, and the minus will be subtracting off. Okay, the velocity times a parameter that I'm going to in, enter called b. Okay. All right, I think I will now kind of address the idea of why these things are glowing pink and all that kind of stuff. Let's hit run. You'll see that you know, I can't run like this, and it's going to say, well, I don't know what J is. For that matter, it doesn't know what B is either. And so these are my um, properties of my system, ultimately. All right, and for a DC motor, it will be resistance, inductance, the torque slash back EMF constant, the shaft inertia J, and then the damping. And so I rehearse this. And therefore, it's available for easily assigning from my commanded history. And I get that information, that data, into my workspace now. Oops, let's bring this back. OK, and so now if I hit Control D, you know, all those, those problems go away, right? And um, at this point, I would say I, I have my mechanics done, although I still need to drive it with essentially the torque that will make this, this system move. Right, and so here we're now going to go in here and see that the same equation is super important. And instead of it being shaft inertia, it's going to be L now, so one over L, and that's the inductance. And so the voltage across the in inductance, if it's sent in here, well, that's going to tell us what di dt is, the rate of change of the current. And if I integrate the rate of change of the current, I will get current. And if I integrate current, you know, maybe uh, there's a battery or something, but I'll get a charge, all right? And it's here, you know, that you might be more attentive to something I've been just quickly going through, and that'll be setting an initial condition. And maybe you have some sort of structure that you keep in MATLAB called battery, and one of its variables or parameters might be the initial charge. And something like that. And I use that example just because I, I think there's something super cool about doing this within MATLAB. So anyways, for the most part, I don't really care about charge. And so I'm going to just delete that. I'm going to send that in like that. Okay, so we're kind of getting there. And so what I want to do now, though, is really kind of be specific on that comment I just made, which is, well, that's the voltage carried by the inductor, right? And so the, the inductor, you know, it's in a circuit with an applied voltage, but also with a resistor, as also with, you know, a load associated with the rotation of the shaft, right? And, and so of those three things I just mentioned, two of them are negative. And so I configured this add block with one plus signal. I'm going to let this constant be the applied voltage. But let's also deal with the resistance of the circuit, okay? And what I know is that the resistance of the circuit is going to ge generate a voltage proportional to current, OK? And that that proportionality constant we simply call R, OK? And then finally, let's kind of work on that back EMF, which is proportional to velocity. So I can get this component right here. And we'll bring in our next proportionality or our next important Let's call a physical parameter, you know, of a motor, uh, which would be the back EMF constant. All right. And so let's kind of adjust our view and make some room. And so the last piece of this, of course, is that we, you know, need to apply a torque. And the torque we know is proportional to the current. And so we come up here to get that current, but we need to, well, actually, instead of Using that as my example, let's choose this one because it actually is the same number. And it's kind of a one of those surprising things when you first encounter it. The back EMF voltage constant and the torque constant are the same thing. Uh, it all really kind of comes from conservation of energy. And if you essentially look at, I'd say, torque times omega and voltage times current, set them equal, I think you'll see it'll fall out pretty easily. But with that, I think we have a DC motor. And so let's hit run. Okay, and that that's the current that you should expect. And that is the shaft velocity that you should expect 
if your parameters are the ones that we chose right here, right? And so obviously parameters ultimately represent component selection, and it's very important to choose the right components. And so we'll kind of move into that um, probably in the next couple of videos. So anyways, for right now, I just want to bring that image back up of our Simulink model that represents the DC motor. Uh, it's the same DC motor that we used in our first video, but we'll see that we packaged it pretty nicely as we move through to get to that. And and in, in general, that's kind of you know where we're going with the, the the next couple of videos. All right, thank you.